and this is my Bantop H612T 4K mirror dash cam. And it finally went out after two years of service, more than two years actually, it finally stopped working. And on this video, I'm gonna show you why it stopped working. Now, I do wanna show you too, something interesting that happened. As you can see on here, this is starting to open up or to separate, and you can see that all the way up to here. I have not tried to open this. This started gradually, and then it continued to grow open more and more and more until it got to this point. Now what's also interesting is that if I push down on this case, I can get it to close again, but pops back open. Now at first I thought this might have contributed to the failure. It appears to be unrelated. And here's a good working confirmed power adapter. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in to show you what I found on my vehicle. And that is that the dash cam literally stopped turning on. Now this actually started in the last few weeks before it started to fail, where I started to see some flickering, almost like we were losing power or an intermittent connection until it got to this point where the dash cam would not turn on. And here's the interesting part. Here is a power bank and I have connected the same type of USB connector. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy in on here. And if I look at the dash cam, ah, here we go it turns on correctly like normal. So I thought this was very interesting that the dash cam will not work under its original cigarette lighter adapter, but it will work with the power bank. Why is that? Well, let me show you. So in order to understand why my dash cam does not work in my vehicle, but it works with a power bank, we have to look closely at this connector, which is right now currently the source of the problem. And for that, we're gonna take a look at this under heavy magnification. And here is the mini USB connector on my H612T dash cam. And as you can see on here, there is a total of five pins on a mini USB connector. One, two, three, four, five. Now normally all those five pins should be raised so we have a good contact with the other connector that's gonna mate on here. However, as you can see, pin one, two, three, and four are in correct position, but number five is now a little bit low to the point where it can create an issue where we don't have a contact. Now for the mini USB connector used in dash cams, we're gonna get power from pin number one, and that is where we get our five volts from. But the ground is gonna come from the last pin. So if we have positive, but we don't have negative, we are not going to get any power in the dash cam and the dash cam is not going to turn on, which is the reason why my H612T does not turn on with the cigarette lighter adapter. But how come it works with my battery bank? Well, let me show you. And currently I have my voltmeter connected to pin one and connected to the last pin, which is ground. And as you can see, sure enough, I have five volts coming from the cigarette lighter adapter port. However, we know that on my H612T, the ground connection is not there because the pin is low. So it will be the equivalent of me disconnecting this wire, which is the ground. So my dash cam gets no power. And if we look closely at the mini USB connector, we have five internal contacts. But in addition to those five contacts, we also have this outer metallic portion which we call the shell and sometimes this shell right here is going to be connected and is going to provide a sixth contact so we'll have five pins and also a sixth connection via the shell. So once again, I have my cigarette lighter adapter plug and I am connected to pin one for positive. And this is the wire that would go to the shell and I'm going to connect to it. And what do we know? no power. That is because the shell on the cigarette lighter adapter plug for this Bantop H612T, it is not connected. However, if we look at this cable that actually uses a USB standard, you can see that if I touch the outer shell of both connectors, we actually have a connection. So the shell is connected on both ends. Now notice the difference on a power bank that is connected via the cable that I just showed you that uses a USB standard. We got power if I connect to the ground on the last pin of the connector. You can see that there's five volts, but we also have power if I connect to the shell. So notice how we have five volts here. So technically we have two grounds. We have the last position of the mini USB connector as ground and potentially the shell. And once again, we are looking at the mini USB connector on my Bantop H612T, and we can see that pin one, which is used for power, is in good condition. But if we look at the last pin, pin number five, which is used for the ground, is down, which explains why this dash cam no longer turns on with the 
cigarette lighter adapter. However, if we look at the edge, we can see that the shield is here. That means that we have two places where this dash cam can grab ground from. It can grab it from here, or it can grab it from the outer shell assuming that the outer shell is connected internally in the dash cam. But that makes sense now why when this is connected on the vehicle where we only have two points for power, it does not work, but it works when it is connected outside of the vehicle where we have three points for power. Now it is relevant to look at this connector because the mini USB connector is used on many other brands, not just Vantop. And if you look at this connector to the untrained eye, you may think, oh, there's a lot of rough areas on here there are cracks on here now remember this is heavily magnified so we're gonna be ab able to see a lot of flaws and imperfections in the molding of this connector the molding is the process in which this connector was made from a plastic now I want to point out that the plastics used by USB connectors are a plastic that we call thermoset plastic thermoset plastic is melted once or it turns into a liquid so it can be formed into the shape of this connector but once a thermoset said plastic has said it cannot reflow it cannot soften up again so the heat from the temperature of the car or whether you put this thing under high high temperature will not make that plastic reflow again and it looks like this connector is made out of two pieces you can see on here the bottom piece and the top piece and you can see that brake line right here that is normal from the factory but just for comparison purposes let's look at a brand new mini USB connector on another dash cam to see how it compares to this connector and here's a brand new mini USB connector on a different dash cam and you can see that all five positions are in the right place and are coming out because this thing is brand new but also let's look at the back let me refocus this right here again these connectors are made out of a thermoset material and what do you know this is brand new and look how rough the surface looks this is normal for a thermoset Again, we can see that line where this connector is made out of two pieces, a bottom piece and a top piece. So this clearly shows that this connector did not or is not going to change over time as far as heat related issues. But even though thermoset plastics do not reflow, that does not mean that they're indestructible. With enough physical force or enough leverage, we can potentially damage this connector and break it either a small hairline crack or we can break it off completely. But if you found a low contact in your dash cam the way that I found one in my Bantop H612T. Is this fixable? Is this repairable? Kind of. Technically, yes. I have seen people who are able to insert a pin or some other very small object in here to lift the contact up to allow it to come back to its original position. However, that fixed, in my opinion, while it might last a long time, it is kind of a band-aid. Most of the times, once the contact is bent in this lower position, it will return back to that position if we, even if we keep pushing it up. So it's a temporary band-aid that may buy you some additional time, but normally once a contact is being damaged like this, it is pretty much near the end of its life. So overall, I think it's still very impressive to see that the Vantop H612T is still working after two years and the only part that fell on it was that mini USB connector because it broke. You saw that contact, how it fell. Which begs the question, if you're in the market for a new mirror dash cam, should you avoid a dash cam that has a mini USB connector? Should you be looking for a dash cam that has a USB-C type connector? Mini USB connectors are rated for 5,000 mating cycles. So that means plugging it and and disconnecting it 5,000 times before they fail. Now, there's no way I have disconnected my Bantop H612T 5,000 times and I wore out my connector. So the connector didn't really wore out as far as plugging it and unplugging it. The connector was damaged. At some point, I probably either put stress on that connector, pulled on it, janked on it, and very possibly I could have damaged the contact. It is also possible that that connector from the factory came a little bit weaker and it did not last as long. But here's the thing, if you go to USB-C connectors, those do have a longer life. Mini USB rated at 5,000 cycles, USB-C is rated at 10,000 cycles. Now, as you saw, I did not get 5,000 cycles out of my Bantop H612T, so there's a high possibility 
that you may also not get 10,000 mating cycles with a USB-C. Which one is actually going to last longer? I think it's really going to come down to the care when inserting a connector into here. Any kind of physical force can potentially damage the connector, prematurely killing it before it's rated live, in this case 5,000 cycles, or in the case of USB-C, 10,000 cycles. And just in case you're wondering if USB-C connector is going to give you better video quality, well not really because dash cams do not use the USB standard for sending the video signal. They are just using the cable for its wires. So whether it's a mini USB connector or a USB-C connector or the micro USB connector that I've seen in some dash cams, the dash cam quality is going to be the same. In fact, some don't even use the USB connector. Some use a 1.8 audio plug style connector and that's how we get video. So my recommendation would be that while it is nice to see newer connectors being used in dash cams such as a USB-C type, do not expect a dash cam with a USB-C type to outperform one with a mini USB or with a different connector altogether. You're going to have great video quality either way. What's going to determine the video quality is the the software that's being run in the dash cam, the sensor that's being run on the dash cam, not the connectors themselves. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful regarding what killed my Vantop H612T and also my opinion regarding USB connectors on dash cams. I do have the full third down video of the Vantop, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. So thank you guys for watching and as always I'll see you on the next one.